If you're looking for a beginner level watercolor tutorial that actually gets you painting something pretty, then you're looking for my Folk Art Valentines. Hello my friends, welcome back. My name is Shada Campbell and it is the love month. February is here and that means we're making Valentines. Today I've got my color palette already figured out. We're doing some folk art Valentines and I'm working with pinks, reds and blues. Now here's what you'll need, watercolor paper, uh, some washi tape or something similar, a little bit of white gouache in addition to your watercolor paints, and I have my set, uh, two glasses of clean water or one for cool colors and one for warm colors, as you can see, that's what I've got, and then a couple small round paint brushes, something like a number six, four, and a two, something like that, whatever you're comfortable with. So grab a cup of tea, light that candle, and let's get mellow because this practice is going to be just as lovely as the finished Valentine itself. Before we begin, if you would like to download and print my Valentines, my folk art Valentines, head over to patreon.com slash Shada Campbell. It's a great way to support this channel and get tons of bonus content. And it only costs you two bucks a month or $22 for an entire year. Here's how we're gonna get things started. I'm using an eight by 10 block of hot pressed watercolor paper and I'm gonna take that washi tape and just mask out two rectangles. So this will be two Valentines. The masking or the washi tape keeps a nice clean white border and protects that area of the paper. Once that's down, we are going to take a really light pink or a peachy pink and we are just going to fill in and do a nice color wash. Now I'm just using a number eight round brush. That is not a good brush for laying down a wash of color and you can see that it's not very smooth and I'm like trying to fix it and make it better but I'm just basically <laughs> abusing my brush. So for the next rectangle, why don't we take a flat wash brush, which does exactly what it sounds like and puts down a nice wash of color. And we'll use this very, very light watery pink. So this is just red with a little bit of orange mixed in, yellow, orange, and a lot of white and a lot of water. And we pick up that nice watery pink paint in our flat wash brush and we run the flat wash brush across the paper horizontally and we get this beautiful smooth wash of color. It's gonna look so pretty, especially when we take off that tape. Ooh, that's the best part, taking off the tape. Anyway, while we wait for those to dry, because that's what we're doing, we're waiting for them to dry now. Didn't say that yet. We are just going to come over to our palette and mix up some of the colors that we wanna work with. And since I'm doing a folk art inspired Valentine, I wanna work with a very limited color palette. So I'm using red. I did mix just a little bit of brown into my red to darken it. I'm using pink and I'm using a cobalt blue with a little bit of ultramarine mixed in. So those are my colors. I've got a nice dark red here and I'm gonna come back over to my paper once that wash is totally dry. And on the left, we're just going to work out a nice large heart. Now you could draw it with pencil first. There's certainly no issue with doing that. I just decided to kind of work mine out in paint, sort of drew it with the paintbrush and then filled it in. Be sure to use a larger brush like a number six or eight for that and work in large smooth movements. Work uh, quickly and confidently so you don't get um, like an outline of a heart. You know what I mean? When you draw the heart with paint and then it kind of dries and then you paint it in. Don't let that happen. You have to sort of do it all in one fluid motion. Anyways, <laughs> then once the heart is on the valentine, we are going to take a much smaller round brush and we're going to start practicing our little flowers and leaves. And this really gives it that folk art flair, all these tiny little florals, and it's just so pretty and simple. And this is also what I meant when I said that the finished, or the practice of painting it is going to be just as lovely as the finished product. Because the practice is all about you just sitting down and kind of getting lost in these little flowers and leaves. They're very hard to screw up. You're just doing like little four and five petal flowers, 
some little stems with pairs of oval shaped leaves. So it's all about practicing your brushwork, working with a tiny paintbrush and just getting confident. If you are someone who says, I don't have enough, I don't know when there's enough water or I don't know if I have enough pigment in the brush or I'm not confident with my brush strokes, this is the perfect practice. You're just gonna sit down for an hour and paint all these tiny little leaves and flowers. If you mess up a couple, you're never gonna notice. And when you come to the end of that practice, you'll have a beautiful Valentine to gift. For our second folk art Valentine, I think we need to draw a little bird. So let's do it. We start with a wing. It's sort of a semicircle that comes to a point. And then you just do a big round body, little beak, put a tiny little tail over there and two legs. And then we're going to put a little heart in his beak. So this is very folky, very cutesy. Um, and basically that's just my way of saying very, very simple. If it looks a little weird and wonky, I think that's a good thing. So don't get hung up on, oh, I can't draw a bird or, or any of those negative thoughts. Um, and then we're going to take that nice dark red and we're going to paint that heart in, moving confidently so that you don't get like a harsh line um, uh, on the outside and we'll use the uh, nice bright cobalt blue for the bird itself. Now this is when your round brush really comes in handy. You can use the delicate point to kind of get the outline of the wing and the tail and make those nice sharp lines, but you go, you're going to add pressure and use the belly of the brush, the larger part, to put down a nice smooth swath of color. And again, you're just not going to get any harsh lines forming or any dry lines forming when you paint confidently and with that proper technique. And just like we did uh, for our first Valentine, we're going to take a small round brush, something like a number two, and we are just going to fill in the entirety of this Valentine with tiny little leaves and berries and flowers. So again, thinking about practicing that brushwork, the end of the brush that's uh, got that nice fine point. So that allows you to do thin lines, detail work, delicate bits, and the part of the brush, or the bristle part that is closer to the base, that's called the belly. And when you add pressure and you drag that belly across the paper, you can make a very organic shape. And those organic shapes that we make, those are what I'm calling leaves and flowers. So just think about making a lot of brush marks. Make a couple brush marks, don't even think about leaves, and then join those marks together with some thin little lines. And all of a sudden you've got a leaf or you've got a flower. Hour. This is an excellent practice. These took me about half an hour each. I was just listening to a podcast, painting all these, these little flowers. And it was very helpful for me because we'd actually been away for a week and I needed that warm up. I needed to get my confidence back. So highly recommend if you're in that place where you're like, oh, I just haven't painted in forever and I feel like I'm going to make something bad. Try this <laughs> and you'll have a pretty Valentine. Okay. Once that first layer is sort of done on both Valentines, we're gonna put a little gouache in our dish and you wanna mix in clean water. So grab clean water, not your pink or blue paint water. And you want to get that gouache from the consistency of toothpaste out of the tube to the consistency of like a milk or water and then switch to a small brush if you weren't mixing with a small brush. And we are going to just keep on doing the same thing. So gouache is a highly opaque water-based medium. It works really beautifully with watercolors because it's very, very similar, but it just has that wonderful opacity. So you can put light on top of dark, which you really can't do with watercolor paints. Um, so as you can see, we're just using this white watery gouache to uh, keep on doing the same, more of the same, simple little leaves and flowers. Try to make them different sizes. You can see I'm doing some kind of larger leaves and then I'm doing some tiny little leaves and berries. So I do have some size contrast and that works to make the whole thing just look, look nice and look interesting. And we're going to fill in the heart on the first Valentine here. And then on the second one, we're going to put some beautiful detailing on the bird and, and the heart and really make that bird like very, very folky and folk art inspired. 
Now I'm really gonna test out my brushwork skills on this second one here, and I'm going to use my number two round brush to write Be Mine. If you're doing this, just make sure that your gouache is mixed well so that it's smooth and watery and doesn't have any big clumps, and blot your brush on your paper towel. That's what it's there for. Uh, you always wanna have a little paper towel handy so that you don't have too much paint in your brush. Whether you're working watercolor or gouache, you cannot be in control of that paint if it's just flowing and falling off the brush. So when you're doing very precise work like this, you definitely need to blot the brush. That was a really long way for me to say that. <laughs> Keep that message simple, something like be mine, and then you're going to fill in around it with lots of little flowers and leaves. And then we'll move on and we'll start on our bird. Now, the first thing I wanna do is a very traditional sort of folk art uh, motif, and that is a very symmetrical flower right down the center of his wing. And from there, I'm going to add a few little dots, um, but much like the rest of this <laughs> painting, I'm just going to keep a lot of little leaves and flowers and uh, he'll get filled in that way. So start with that very symmetrical flower right up the center of the wing with the pairs of leaves, add a few little dots and stripes maybe, and then you know what to do. So many leaves and little flowers <laughs> and just fill them in. Just a reminder, friends, if you're seeking more guidance and help with your watercolor painting, especially if you love florals like I do, I have a couple e-courses available on my website. Head to shadacampbell.com to check them out and use code five flowers. That's from last week's video titled five flowers you need to paint to master watercolor in 2023 to get 20% off five flowers, code gets you 20% off. So if you want to get 20% off anything on my courses site, whether it's the bundle or, you know, either course, you can do that. Okay, guys, this is the part we've all been waiting for. We're going to take off the tape. It's so good. You remove the masking tape. It shouldn't damage the paper in any way. And you get that beautiful clean white border. And it's just so satisfying. It's so satisfying. And uh, what I need to do now is simply cut these out so that they do have a beautiful white border and that they're sort of Valentine card sized. And that's what they look like when they're all done. It's just the sweetest little Valentines. They were a great way to practice. I used a blue marker to write a message on the first one. And that's all there is to it. Happy V-Day, my friends. <laughs> head to Patreon to get your printable Valentines if you want to print mine. And head to shadacampbell.com to check out my watercolor e-courses. <laughs> <laughs>